hi guys good day i hope you guys are having a great one welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm becky i bring you awesome fun and timely content on all my platforms so make sure you like you comment you share and you subscribe i would really appreciate it this day was an early morning i woke up feeling energized feeling like i need to clean i have such days i don't I don't know if you all have such days, but I definitely do, where I just wake up feeling like I need to wash the roof to the floor, do everything, do everywhere. And this was this day, so I got up, and before I have breakfast, I clean first. So this day I did laundry, and then I cleaned. So I was wiping down stains from that uh, table thing we have. Then I organized... Uh, the sitting room and I cleaned out the carpet so yeah let's do that <laughs> shower i have washed my hair as you can tell and i want to sort it out right now and then i will plate it a bit later when it is dry but for now i want to do my normal living let me let me take my comb i want to detangle it a bit more have my comb here with me this one i'll use it to detangle my hair a bit more you guys have seen this routine so many times so for today i'll not i'll not talk a lot i will basically just do 
so yeah let's do this and then i'll see you guys when i am done so yeah let me do this <laughs> decided to sort out my green grams and then if you like it's been i don't remember the last time i had them it should have been sometime last month but i had bought i bought them already uh boiled i only like um what is it called stewed them in tomatoes and onions so today I have decided to do the whole shebang. So this is what we are doing today. All right, so plug it in. on but for now let me put in the dengu I washed them Six of this, so ten to twelve of water. Mm -hmm. 
eight. This thing is, it's a lot of mathematics, by the way. I didn't think it was at first. <laughs> I did not think it was this much mathematics in the beginning, but now I have gotten a hang of it and it is mathematics. So, salt to boil with. That is all I will put in there. And then your lid. Twenty-five is a lot. Mm, so tasty. Twenty-five is. Twenty-five is a lot of time. The last time I put. How do I make my kamande? Is it steam? Let me do steam. For 15 minutes. Yeah. That's what we will do. And you just you just let it do the thing, so let's wait and see. <laughs> Hi guys, so this is what I'm having. My hot chocolate with some guache as I watch a movie. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. The green grams are done. I hope it's in my liver.
they are well cooked that was 15 minutes let me bring you guys a bit closer up well done so yeah let's uh, cook them guys so before i cook let me lift you a bit before i do this cooking business i want to to clean my cooker it's a bit on the dirty side i've neglected it for a while and it shows so as i was saying i want to clean my cooker it's a bit on the dirty gunky side and i don't like it like that so sorry for the shake up i want to clean this girl up before i make dinner it's four i just want to make dinner early so that i can figure the <laughs> the hair situation since morning i've done nothing to it but I've had I've had a really productive day today, so I feel good. So I want to sort uh, this cooker out, and then we are going to close the vlog here. I want this to be uh, like a few days in the life. So this is the situation. If you guys can see it properly. So this is what I'm dealing with currently. There's so much gunk everywhere. And all of them actually look like this. All the the cooker gibbets. So I'm just removing all of them to wash. And then I will show you how the cooker itself looks. All right. I do this once a week. If I'm like on a regular week once a week is okay but do you see how dirty these things are they're so dirty and then now let me show you the cooker it is the worst can you guys see this is what i am dealing with this one uh, i had a, a situation with the the gibbet for here but i got it fixed so this should not happen again i had placed it wrongly you can see how dirty and gunky it looks so we are definitely fixing this with my all time you guys know if you know you know i'm going to use this and a scrubby thing and yeah so let's do this
or maybe you're just weary, still recovering mentally and spiritually from the pandemic, from the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and all that has gone on in the past several years, being overwhelmed by everything happening in the world. It is a lot. It's just a lot going on all the time. So um, one morning I was just sitting in my office opening up my mail and inside was a package. I pulled out a beautiful green book with this title, The Garden Within, where the war with your emotions ends and your most powerful life begins. Now, now y'all know I love a garden and who knew that we all have a garden within us. I happen to, as you all know, having uh, watched me over the years, I love a book that can fortify you, that can lift you up, that's an offering to your spirit. And that's why I'm sitting here with the author of The Garden Within, Dr. Anita Phillips. Welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's amazing to be here. Since this is our first time on Super Soul, tell our audience, tell us about yourself and how did you come to this work? Well, I'm a trauma therapist, but I'm also a third generation pastor's kid. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a very religious family and had an older sister who developed the symptoms of a serious mental illness when we were very young. She's about 11 or 12 years old. I was about six years old. Mm -hmm. She woke up in the middle of the night, one night just screaming with her eyes wide open, staring at our bedroom door. And she said there was a demon standing there. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, I'm a pastor's kid, old school black church. So Mm -hmm. I figured we rebuke that and we'll deal with it. My parents will come soon and everything's going to be okay. But a few nights later, again, and a few weeks later, again. And so it came clear that there was something else going on. But it's the early 80s, so we had no idea about mental illness. There was no language for it. No language. It wasn't my parents saying, oh, we believe in God and not mental illness. On the list of options, it wasn't there. We had no idea. So So what did you all think was happening? What did you all think? She was... Did you think she was possessed? Did you think what? That, that it was a spiritual attack, so somehow the devil is tormenting her. And then as she got older and began to act out and run away from home, it was just rebellion. And so then she'd be harshly punished for acting out, but not realizing that she was um, schizophrenic and bipolar. And so mm-hmm. she would have manic episodes, but we didn't know what it was. And then she got addicted to drugs, which really was a form of self-medication. And mm-hmm. we lost her to the streets for three decades. Mm-hmm. Heroin addiction on the streets and finally, thank goodness she did get clean at the end of her life. Last seven years of her life, she was able to get off drugs, get treatment for her mental illness, get married, reunite with us as a family. And unfortunately, at 47, she closed her eyes. Her body was so broken from those years on the streets. She had a heart attack and died when she was 47. And so even though she didn't die by suicide, I consider untreated mental illness my sister's cause of death because it stole decades of her life and our family's life. I was going to say, and what did it steal from you? Uh, Because when the child or the person in the family, whether it is a child or whether it is another member of the family, takes all the energy, all the attention, all the focus, it shapes the way the good kid or the person who's just trying to be all right, you know, (laughs) views their own life and also shapes the way they see and are seen by others. Completely all of those things. First of all, the terror of her waking up like that was traumatizing for me. I didn't sleep with the door open until I was in my 20s. Because if I woke up and saw an open door in the dark, immediately my body would go into a panic. So there was that level of trauma. Mm -hmm. Then yes, I was the good kid. I was the kid who got the grades, who did the things, who got the awards. And so it was like, I'm proof that the family's not a mess. There's a good kid here. But then also feeling unseen, that there wasn't enough emotional energy to go around. And so very often I felt... Because your parents would be drained just dealing with that all the time. Yeah, exactly. So as long as I wasn't in trouble, you know, it was like everything's fine. But I felt felt a little lost. I felt alone. And so that was its own form of trauma. How How did it lead you to working as a trauma therapist? Uh, Because I wanted to understand what had gone wrong, what had happened. First, my own trauma, because when I realized it was still in my body, even in my early 20s, Mm -hmm. I hadn't known the word trauma before that. But something's happening here. And I was just starting my career as a mental health professional at that time. But also there was a, a nagging question. I remember my mom once saying, I know something's wrong with Valerie that we don't understand but I still want to know what my Bible says about it. We had such a deep need to explain things spiritually as well. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do both. So I became a trauma therapist, but I also went into ministry. 
and worked really hard and God was good to have those things intersect for me. Mm. Can you explain, Dr. Phillips, what you mean by the garden within our hearts? Absolutely. So early as a grad student, when I took my first neuroscience class, Mm -hmm. I saw a picture of a neuron for the first time, and I was blown away by how much it looked like a seedling. Like I'm Googling seedling neuron and aligning them, and they look so much alike. And then I started hearing scriptures that I'd known forever. You'll be like a tree planted by streams of water, water and God yes. will plant you in good land and you'll be like a watered garden, Isaiah 58, 11. And I thought, oh my goodness, there's billions of these tiny plants that we call neurons mm-hmm. planted all over the inside of us. God must have done this on purpose. The creator That had we to. are somehow mirroring yes. nature. Exactly. Nature's garden as the garden within, within us. us. Yes. Yeah, he yeah. planted a garden within us. Yes, and here's what you write um, in the introduction that I wanted to read. You don't need to overthrow your emotions to experience a revolution in your life. You just need to overthrow the lies you have believed about your emotions. The creator designed your heart to be a garden, not a war zone. A truly powerful life isn't one, it's cultivated. I just love that so much. A truly powerful life isn't one, it's cultivated. It's continually seeding, Mm -hmm. watering. Caring for the soil. Caring for the soil. Caring for the soil. Because when I looked at that neuron, that's a little plant. My heart says, God, where is it planted? You know, because that's what matters for a plant, where it's planted. So neurons are the building block of the mind. But God showed me in scripture that that plant is in the soil of the heart. And so I had to begin to look at the relationship between our emotions and our thoughts. And it's not the relationship that many of us have believed. We believe the lie that our thoughts create our feelings, but they do not. It is our feelings that water our thoughts. Our thoughts come from the soil of our hearts. And so that's a very different way of understanding ourselves. But neurobiology is bearing it out. The scripture has been saying it all along. Yes, that's right. Emotional pain is like... There are signals to you. There there are signals to you. Yes. And what happens is most people just give away themselves over to the feeling and they think they are the anger. Mm. They think they are the jealousy, you know? Right, and they think that that's bad. But really, emotions, especially the painful ones, they're like hunger pangs. When we feel hungry, we know we need food. When we feel sadness, it's actually indicating a need for connection. When we're angry, it's usually because something that we value has been treated as less than, and we need that value restored. And when we're afraid, we need safety. And so emotional pain is like a hunger pang for connection, for value, for safety. And humans need those things to survive. But we have been taught that our emotions are in the way. They're slowing me down for my goals. We're putting it aside. And so it's like we're running the marathon of our life without feeding our needs. And that's why so many people achieve their goals but are emotionally empty Mm. because they still haven't eaten. And so they get there and they don't feel the way they thought they would feel because they didn't think they needed connection or safety or value. They just need to achieve. But it's so much more than that to live this meaningful life. Tell us the more. The more is relationships. The more is purpose. The more is leaving legacy. Yes. Those are the components. That's what we want to grow in this garden. And a lot of times we, people are skipping that. That's why I say we don't gather goals. We'll go out and say, oh, I want a lemon tree in my yard. And you go out and buy a bucket of lemons and then hang the lemons on the tree. That doesn't make it a lemon tree. I want to grow this internally from an emotionally well place. Mm-hmm. It might take longer for me to get where I'm going, mm-hmm. but I'll get there well. The creator designed your heart to be a garden, a garden, not a war zone. A truly powerful life isn't one, it is cultivated. And so that cultivation mm-hmm. is a... Hi guys, so this is what I have remaining from the batch of green grams I have boiled. So this is dinner, made rice. I've made some very yummy cabbage. By the way, this is a hack I saw on Quiz Kitchen. On her Instagram, add this to your cabbage and you will never be the same again. So try it and yeah, see how you like it anyway. And then this is my green gram stew. So dinner is ready. I feel so accomplished. So yeah, I can go and we can actually go and continue with with our day and hopefully make this here let's go Hello, my beautiful friends this is the first time you all are seeing me today 
but yeah it's been the hustle and bustle of homemaking but i am done i'm actually done it's 5 25 and i just want to do these two lines on my hair so that i can clear off my schedule for the day i hope you guys enjoyed spending the day with me from morning i know i've not done much per se but i thought i would um, throw in a day vlog so that just to switch it up a bit so i hope you guys enjoy if you see these guys during if you see this video during vlogmas it's vlogmas all right so i have started pre-filming for that because christmas is is crazy so i don't want to be caught off guard anyway so today the second episode of the wedding series is going up and it is my proposal story guys i am still every time i think about it i honestly blush a bit because i keep i also keep telling my partner i cannot believe he went through with it i don't know why <laughs> i keep telling him i cannot believe he went through with marrying me like dude as in you are serious anyway so yeah you guys um did this 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 thing on my hair with me today and i just want to finish it this this the lines i do will stay in for a while so at, at least they do that is from my prior experience you guys will see how i do it it's not hard honestly it's it's pretty simple and my hair is well stretched out from this morning which is what i was hoping to achieve otherwise what do you guys want to see on uh, on vlogmas i am definitely doing vlogmas and I'll be hosting for the first time. It's super exciting. So I'll post all that for you. But what else do you want to see? I know I have a few. Uh, I, not actually a few. I have a lot of wedding series content. But that is only for Wednesdays. All right. So the other days I need, I need to come up with a plan. So that I don't look like I don't have a plan. You know, you need to have a plan. So you guys can tell me in the comments section what you would love to see, new content you would love to experience here. And I will definitely do that for you guys. But yeah, oof, I love my hair, guys. Yo, uh, uh, this girl, this girl is, she's, she's on a whole other level. I just, I just love it. So... Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you guys. So for today, that is what I was able to do. I woke up quite early. Most of my day was spent doing uh, laundry. So yeah, my mirror is in front of me. So in case you're wondering why I am facing this direction. My mirror is here. Here. So the first thing is definitely parting the hair. This hairstyle is very easy. If you are a naturalista, I would highly, highly uh, recommend you learn how to do this, this one. It will save you so much time and effort. Yeah, that is... That is that is that is just who this hairstyle is. So you just part it. Ensure that your part is straight from the front to the back. The back is usually a bit tricky for me because as you can see, I honestly can't see what I'm doing, but I just touch and feel. So it takes practice, but I've been doing this a while. So just touch and feel where you're supposed to be dividing your hair and just divide it. So I know the back is a bit on the tricky side, but at least the front that is going to be showing is, is better. So this is the back. I don't know how it looks like, <laughs> but I'm sure it's crooked. Mosquito, you're playing with me. So I'm sure it's crooked. So. 
but I don't mind. The front is what I care about the most. So, two things. One, ensure your hair is as straight as possible. And the second thing is grip. Ensure you have grip. Like, once you hold the hair, you are holding it not tightly but firmly so that it doesn't unravel sooner than you would want it to so for me i have just i have a firm grip even on a normal so so like so and then i will divide it here in the front so that i can be able to see my three parts Yo, wait now guys, my hands are already tired and I've not even started, so you want three sections, so I pick three sections from the front. These are going to be my major plating sections. If you know how to do lines, you know it is a three strand thing. First, I will brush it. So that there are no flyaways. Oh, my hands are tired. But it's okay. It's alright. So, look for my three strands. Like so. Those are my three strands, if you can see then you just plate if you know how to plate you know it is literally interlocking of hair so yeah let me try and do this because talking and doing this is making me more tired than i should be so let me let me do this and then i will i'll show you guys how it turns out like let me concentrate <laughs> all right let me do this <laughs>
and this is the other and it's literally this simple they are not perfect i want them to last until sunday then sunday i will do others for the week like that like that like that so basically my two lines super cute i like them i cannot complain so guys thank you so so much for watching this video thank you for spending the day with me i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed chilling with me whatever you want to see next please leave it in the comments section log on to the wedding series jump on it enjoy binge watch reward share with friends and family subscribe to my channel if you're not many of you watch and you're not subscribed so i would really appreciate if you subscribed because you enjoy the content so please subscribe and i will definitely see you guys on my next video all right so smash that subscribe button like this video leave me a comment and have yourselves a great rest of the day i'll see you guys on my next upload bye Oh, 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 oh,